you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. This is Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Welcome to the big show, my family and friends. We certainly appreciate you guys coming by the show today and uh, sharing it all with us. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, please turn your attention to the center ring. Welcome to the big show. Uh, as always, we have the most amazing authors and minds on the show uh people that will make you brilliant smarter so that you can walk around and be as braggadocious as you want as to how intelligent you are more than the rest of the populace no i don't lord around that way but uh, you know in your own mind you can uh self supply some of your narcissistic ego by sharing and listening to the chris Voss show <laughs> go to refer your friends and family i guess is what we're saying go to goodreads.com for just chris Voss, youtube.com for just chris Voss, linkedin.com for just chris Voss, and uh, uh over there on tiktok chris Voss one we're trying to be cool and it's not working because uh we're old <laughs> uh -huh. but we're trying to keep up so check that out as well uh he is the author of the newest book that just came out uh, november 8th 2022 uh gary s berger is on the show with us today his book is called einstein the man and his mind he had both clearly i have only have one which is my man, but there's no mind. But uh, we'll be talking about this amazing, beautiful book that uh, he has put together, and uh, we're going to have him brought right on the show. Uh, Gary, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Chris? I am excellent, my friend. Welcome to the show. Congratulations on the new book. Give us a dot .com uh, where people can find you on the interweb, which is in the sky. Well, uh, the book is... Uh described there's some photos videos and ways to see this book uh at the website einstein dash that's a hyphen the man in his mind dot net there you go so what motivated you want to write this book is this your first book uh, what motivated you want to write this book well i mean collect the, well, the photographs in it too the visual yeah. aspect of it what motivated me was uh i have thought about Albert Einstein for decades. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, I heard a lot about him. Um, I'm at the age where I was alive when he was alive. Mm -hmm. And um, when I first heard about relativity uh, in school, I really didn't understand what it was. Um, yeah. And um, you know, I kind of more or less forgot about it. But uh, later in life, I, in reading, you know, uh, about Einstein, I decided, hey, I really want to understand. I'm, you know, I'm not a mathematician. I'm not a physicist. But I want to understand why he's so famous. Mm -hmm. What did he actually do? And so, um, you know, over the course of about uh, the last 25 to 30 years, um, I began collecting um photographs and other documents you know by einstein mm -hmm. uh and in uh, studying them and you know trying to learn reading watching videos you know just trying to learn what i could uh and then over these years uh, i realized hey i've got probably the largest private collection of oh, wow. original einstein items anywhere and I uh, decided, hey, you know, I can share this with other people and let them see and learn from it as well. Uh, so that was the concept behind this book. It's a very, to me, it's it's different from other books about Einstein because it uh, is based on photographs and other images mm -hmm. uh, accompanied by a pretty concise text that explains, you know, who he was and what his life was about uh, from age 16 until his death at age 76. So there you go. 
Yeah, it's in chronological order. It's uh, basically, you know, I would describe it as a coffee table type of book because it's uh, oversized. It's quite heavy, mm -hmm. um, you know, in order to get the reproductions right, um, the, the weight of the paper and all of that, you know, uh, was involved in the design. But <clears throat> I think anybody who's interested in even curious in any way about Einstein or his discoveries, or really the way he thought, that's what interested me. How did he come to these realizations that nobody had ever dreamed of before? And that now, you know, we see uh, in our current life, I mean, it brought us into the modern age of physics. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was kind of the motivation was to just share this information and, um, the enjoyment, the real pleasure of getting to know him as an actual man uh, and how his mind worked. That's mm -hmm. the key. That was what interested me the most. There you go. And it's a 4.4 pound book. It's a giant tome, very large and uh, beautifully done. Uh, you know, it's, it's visually uh, epic to look at and uh it, it's quite interesting so uh, i would give tell us a little bit about your biography your background and and what what brought you to this point or or, or some of your journey so we can get to know you a little better well <clears throat> my background uh, <clears throat> i mean i'm a um i'm not a physicist or a historian mm -hmm. uh i'm a doctor mm -hmm. and uh <clears throat> I, I my previous work I did a, I published quite a lot, but it was all in medicine. This is really the first time in my life that I really, um, you know, decided you know, I wanted to write about this man that, to me, is one of the most incredible people who ever walked the earth. Mm -hmm. um, Again, you know, it's like I think what differentiates us from the other animals is our ability to think logically and also creatively. And he had this capacity far beyond, you know, most ordinary people. Yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, I think that <clears throat> when I was a teenager, I. Uh, got to know a, a physicist who was a friend and a student of Einstein's. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I always had this kind of curiosity about Einstein, you know, why, what, what, what was it? You know, I know he's a genius. He's known all over the world, but what was it that he actually did? <clears throat> and that's what got me started on this um, project of learning. There you go. And so with these photographs, I mean, do you own the copyright to them? You, you've you been collecting them over the years? Uh, I own a copyright to the book. Um, mm -hmm. The photographs, some of the photographs, um, the copyright is owned by the um, original photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, we trace down for every image that we used in this book, you know, we trace down the ownership. And, uh, but most of it, yeah, I would say probably, uh, the majority of the, uh, photos in the book, uh, are mine in mm -hmm. terms of copyright. There you go. Uh, and, and there's a lot of other things that are in here, like his notes, uh, that are very detailed or, you know, things that he's thinking about, uh, things that kind of give you an insight to the glimpse of his mind. Tell us about some of those as well. So there's pictures of him and then pictures of his work. Hi, folks, here's Foss here with a little station break. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. We'll resume here in a second. Uh, I'd like to invite you to come to my coaching, speaking, and training courses website. You can also see our new podcast over there at chrisvossleadershipinstitute.com. Over there, you can find all the different stuff that we do for speaking engagements, if you'd like to hire me, uh, training courses that we offer, and coaching for leadership, management, entrepreneurism, uh, podcasting, corporate stuff. Uh, with over 35 years of experience in business and running companies as a CEO, and be sure to check out Chris Voss Leadership institute.com now back to the show 
Yeah, actually, I'll, I'll show you just, you mentioned the, the size and weight of the book. It's a big book. It is quite large. If you can see. It's but beautiful, it had, though. It had to be this way in order to be able to reproduce, you know, like photographs as uh -huh. they were taken, as you can see. Wow. And even so, uh, with this size book, there were a few of the photographs that we had to shrink in size. But everything else is true to actual size. So. Wow. So you can actually read his notes and the size that they would be, and and uh, and 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 get a good be, be able to you know kind of read it because yeah some of the notes and stuff he shrunk them down to a very small book. Uh, the handwriting and stuff that's on them would be probably harder to read. Yeah, and you know we kind of intersperse. You asked about different things like uh, we intersperse with um, when I say we, uh, I uh, my co-author is Michael De Ruggiero. Uh, who uh, owns the Manhattan Rare Bookstore, and he helped me over the years uh, assemble this collection. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, we kind of sprinkled in various anecdotes and little vignettes that make a point. Um, for example, you know, talking about Einstein's creativity and the way he thought. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things he said was that if he were not a physicist, he would have been a musician. Oh, wow. and, and, you know, there's a picture of him in the book, um, kind of in his study. He looks like he's silently, you know, leading the orchestra as he's listening to music on a stereo. <clears throat> and he said, you know, I think in music. I live my daydreams in music. Really? Uh, you know, so it's kind of an interesting, just a little, one little point. But I think that has to do with, again, you know, this idea of creativity. Um, another thing that's included in the book was his son, Hans Albert, describing that whenever Einstein kind of came up against a problem that he was stuck and couldn't make any headway, <clears throat> he would resort to playing his violin. And uh, after that, you know, the problem would be solved. So mm -hmm. he thought in this imaginative way, he, he created thought experiments, but he also, he had this um, relationship between his ideas and music. I mean, that's kind of an amazing thing. Yeah. Cool. And it's an interesting balance to his mind and stuff and, and what went into it. You know, uh, being able to look at the world in a different angle, I think that's why people, I mean, one of the reasons people respect uh, something like him is his ability to look at the world through a different lens than, you know, what was accepted and, and, and see things and kind of see into the future and, and uh, understand the world. And I think that's why people have always been so... Um, enthralled with him really when it comes down to it so yeah other uh there's another little passage in the book that's interesting with a picture of him um in california uh and he visited he went to see uh the opening uh show of a movie of charlie chaplin and uh chaplin was there uh he and chaplin uh exchanged some words uh, you know, which have been quoted, Chaplin saying, you know, the, or he, he said to Chaplin, you know, you're, you're amazing. Uh, you don't say a word and the whole world understands you. And mm -hmm. Chaplin's response was, ah, but your glory is even greater. The word doesn't, <laughs> the world doesn't understand a thing of what you say, yet they love you. So, you know, it kind of points out, uh, what Einstein wrote about um, was complex. Mm -hmm. And most people, even the, his peers, you know, the uh, physicists of the day, uh, really didn't understand all of it. Uh, so it took, took many years, you know, uh, before he was given um, recognition. Uh, the, there's a description um this is now one week before the centennial of his 
Nobel address. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole interesting story in itself uh, because, you know, the, you would think that he would have won the prize easily and for his theory of relativity, which is what his greatest contribution was. Yeah. Well, what he's most well known for. Mm. But that, you know, that never happened. Um, wow. Yeah. So there, there's just a lot of, um, he, he had a um, very uh, dedicated life, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to his work uh and his thought and his imagination of what the world really how how the universe really was so, do you think uh what, what do you think are going to surprise some people in the book maybe things that haven't been seen before or maybe uh, things that people are going to take away from the book and be like wow that was amazing i didn't really know about that I think one, one thing people will take away from this book is not just a, um, you know, understanding the essence of his scientific contributions, but the, get an emotional response from looking at him as he develops an age, uh, you know, through the years. I mean, when I look at these, some of these photographs and you can see his emotions coming through, uh, his um, ability to focus, mm -hmm. uh, many of the best photographs, in, in, in my opinion, in the book were taken uh, by photographers where they just were in his presence long enough where he began to ignore them and went on about, you know, pulled out his pad and pencil and started working on problems. And they uh, took these candid photographs of him and you see the intensity of his concentration, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, this kind of far away look in his eye, <laughs> like, you know, he's in another world. Mm -hmm. And it's captured in these photographs, and you see the uh, emotional toil in his face mm -hmm. uh, over the years of war, uh, his dedication to pacifism, uh, his changing his stance on that uh, when he became a U.S. citizen and mm -hmm. <clears throat> was concerned that... Um, the Nazis might develop an atomic bomb. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he was instrumental in bringing to the attention of President uh, Franklin Roosevelt uh, the theoretical possibility, you know, that this could be done. Uh, and that was something that he regretted severely, you know, when, wow. when the bomb was actually dropped. Mm -hmm. um, you see these things, I think, you know, that's what comes across to me about this book that's different from any book that's ever been written before that I know of. Mm -hmm. uh, and is that you actually get to appreciate who not only, you know, who he, what he did, how he thought, but who he was as a person. There you go. Uh, yeah, like, here's an example of this where uh, it, it's a, uh, here he is, there's some notations here where he's working on problems relating to understanding gravitational forces, gravitational forces, quantum theory, and the implications of general theory of relativity. I think one of his, uh, I think uh, one of his things is off. I see what the problem is here. No, I don't. No, I don't. I'm not good will hunting. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got these beautiful uh, uh, papers that, and, and so you can see, you know, I think the, the point of intrigue really is you can see his mind, you know, and he's, he's working on this stuff and the simplicity of it is extraordinary. And he's got these math equations there. He's clearly using that. I flunked in uh, calculus uh, and could never figure out. So uh, he's definitely uh, probably greater two ahead of me on that. Uh, but no, it, do, do, I know that there was, uh, we've had people on the show that, uh, you know, talked about his love interests and relationships and romances. I know there's a lot of love letters that he wrote and he's very eloquent. And I, I think what's interesting about 
you know, you talk about the emotion of the man, you know, I, I would always have assumed that, you know, uh, Einstein would be like, you know, this very logical guy, like, you know, I don't know, uh, who's the, who's the Sherlock Holmes, you know, uh, elementary, yeah. my dear Watson. Yeah. And here he is emotional. Do you, do you get any love letters to make it in the book, or is that kind of a uh, not the love letters? But uh, his Einstein, you know, was definitely he was human being. You know, yeah, he wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. He uh, he had uh, you know personal issues like any of us do, but mm -hmm. uh, that didn't never that did not detract from his ability to enter a uh, mental state, I would say, mm -hmm. where, <clears throat> you know, the rest of the world kind of just disappeared. And he was in his own mind thinking about the problems. Uh, this is how he would actually came to be able to solve these physical problems was to simplify them down into thought experiments. Mm -hmm. um, and there are <clears throat> a number of examples, you know, given in the book of those thought experiments and what they showed. Mm -hmm. um, and he was also, he was a very humble, unassuming mm -hmm. person. He didn't spend, uh, I don't think he spent any uh, time in his life, uh, you know, trying to impress or please other people. Uh, he as he aged, <clears throat> you know, he kind of simplified his life down to the point where uh, we have a picture of him at his uh, citizenship ceremony, you know, when he became a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. And the photographer took a picture kind of angling from the floor up that accentuates the fact that he, was, he wasn't wearing socks. You know, <laughs> things like that were typical. He didn't bother cutting his hair, that was a waste of time, you know, no need for barbers. One leather jacket solved the problem of, you know, clothing. Um, this was his lifestyle, you know, he was uh, basically a simple, humble person. Uh, he was very dedicated to um, justice, but I would say most of, again, going back to what got me interested, I think was the science part of it because uh and this i think relates you know quite a bit to our current day what he really was was a seeker of truth and really you know the the idea that there are facts there are universal truths mm -hmm. and that they really matter and uh you know that's to me like one of the highest um callings you know one can have is to be a seeker of truth and that's nothing deviated him from that and from expressing what he believed you know was to be true there you go i mean truth is always important because if you don't have truth well then you don't have anything really i mean when you think about it right yeah and yeah. you know of course even in his day you know there were there were people who um had alternate facts um you know when he was uh when he departed germany um as the second world war you know was beginning he was able to get out of germany before mm -hmm. it. uh <clears throat> and his uh, because he was a pacifist and he rejected German citizenship and he spoke out against, you know, the uh, warlike factions. Uh, there were something like there was a group called the 100, 100 scientists who all signed a proclamation, you know, stating that Einstein's theory of relativity, you know, wasn't true. It was really? all, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and his comment was a pretty simple when he said it would only take one, you know, to prove me wrong. Wow. So, 
you know, having a hundred people saying something's not true doesn't make it not true. <laughs> That's what I tell everybody when I'm uh, when I'm trying to convince someone I'm right. <laughs> so there you go. Well, it's a beautiful tome, and there's a lot of stuff in it. I think people are going to be. I think people are going to take away from it just some really great things. And uh, any any last thoughts or suggestions you want to make before we go out? Well, I just think. Uh, you know, if you're interested in Einstein, this is something that uh, I think you'll enjoy. It's uh, not a book to be necessarily read from beginning to end. It's more one to browse through and think about, you know, as you look at the images, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, you know, you... The, what you take away is um, thinking about what that was, you know. Um, so I think for somebody who's curious about Einstein, you know, this is a great introduction. There you there go. You. There you go. And and a beautiful one as well. I mean, it makes a great, uh, not only read, but uh, and, and visual aspect, but, you know, a great coffee table book. So if you want to, you know, impress everybody on how smart you are. You can be like, hey, check out what hey, I yeah, got here. Yeah, look at this. That's yeah. true. Einstein always is kind of synonymous with genius. So, yeah, if you say that you really understand Einstein, you know, I guess you have to be pretty smart. Yeah. I'll go through his notes and I'll see if I can figure out his math and all that uh, stuff. Which I'll yeah, learn. good luck. I'll be I'll, I'll try and be like, uh, what's his face in Goodwill Hunting, you know, where he goes and solves the math board thing. <laughs> so there you go. Well, it's been wonderful to have you on the show, uh, Gary. We really appreciate it. Very insightful. And what a wonderful story. Uh, give us your dot .com so that people can find you on the interwebs, please. Uh, Einstein hyphen the man and his mind dot net. There you go. There you go. Uh, so thanks uh, for coming on the show. We really appreciate it. Thanks, my audience, for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, Fortress Chris Foss, YouTube.com, Fortress Chris Foss, uh, LinkedIn.com, Fortress Chris Foss, all those crazy places on the internet that we are at. Pick up the book, order wherever fine books are sold, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, share it with friends. You know, the more we, the more we know, the smarter we are. Uh, Einstein, The Man and His Mind came out November 8th, 2022 by Gary S. Berger and Michael, is it D. Ruggiero? Ruggiero. Mm -hmm. There we go. There we go. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank and that you. should have